Hey everyone, my name's Cameron. I'm so glad you're joining us today. This whole month, we're going to be looking at a group of stories in the Bible from the book of Acts. Our friend Watson put together a video to help set up what we're gonna be talking about exactly. Let's check it out. So, you might think we have the perfect ending to this story after Jesus was raised from the dead. You know, he goes to the cross, comes back to life, and then goes back up into heaven. Oh. Bye, Jesus. Hope you have fun up there in heaven. All right, story over. Roll the credits. Well, that was the shortest video shoot I've ever done. Wait, what? It's actually not the end of the story? Oh, yes, right, the script, right. Thanks, Doug. That's why we keep you around. Okay, where was I? Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Jesus going back to heaven is just the beginning of the next part of this story. Jesus said that he went back to heaven so he could send the Holy Spirit to live in you. Now, who is the Holy Spirit, you might ask? Well, the Holy Spirit is the third person of who we call God. Wait, Doug, am I reading that right? He's part of God? Whoa, so cool. So the Holy Spirit is the power of God for the mission of God. So we're checking out what's happening in the Bible at the start of the book of Acts with a bunch of people receiving the Holy Spirit inside of them and then going out and doing some awesome things. That's what we're gonna be talking about. This sounds awesome. I'm gonna go grab a seat so I can watch too. We're talking all about how the Holy Spirit gave the early church the power to carry out the mission that God gave them. Today's story is about the early church and how they lived after Jesus went back up to heaven. They chose to honor Jesus by living like he did. They loved people around them, they lived unselfishly. In short, they were a great picture of Jesus to the people around them. But this isn't a natural way to live. The Holy Spirit gave them power to make the right choices and to live like Jesus. We should do the same. That's why today we are saying every day I make choices that honor Jesus. Before we talk about that, we're going to sing a song together. So go ahead and stand up and sing this out as loud as you can. You're the one I want my life to celebrate 
You guys sounded so good. Thank you for singing along with us. Now, we're going to take some time and watch a Bible story together. Like I said earlier, we are going to be looking at a story about the early church. Let's check it out. The church is the building we go to when we want to learn about God. Nope, this is a church. Those are people. Yep, in fact, it's you and me. You kinda lost me. The church isn't a building. The church is the people who have made Jesus the leader of their lives. And that's us. We don't go to church. We are the church. And we exist for the world. Oh, okay. I still don't get it. Let's look in the book of Acts. That's where the Bible talks about the very first church, the people who first believed in Jesus. They didn't have buildings to meet in, so they met where they could, usually in people's homes. So their church was a house? Nope, the church met in houses. Even then, the church was the people. And the apostles taught them many things about God. They did great and wonderful things with God's power. God did amazing things through everyone in the church. Through all the people? How? The people of early church put others first. They prayed together. They shared meals. They shared their time. They shared everything. Everything? Really? Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. The Bible tells us that when one of them needed something, others shared what they had. They even sold things and used the money to help out. That's amazing. That's putting others first. The early church was really good at it. For instance, this one guy, Joseph, sold a field and brought the money to the people of the church to help those who needed it. Awesome. What made them do that? They all agreed. They all wanted to live like Jesus, and the apostles told them how Jesus put others first when he died on the cross and went up to heaven. The early church learned about Jesus and lived like him, so they put others first. I think I get it. Great, but you haven't heard the best part. When others saw how those first church people lived, it made them want to follow Jesus too. In fact, more people decided to follow Jesus every single day. Wow. God did do amazing things through the first church people. And God still does amazing things through his people when they live like Jesus and put others first. Right, because we are the church. And we exist for the world. The early church was devoted to following Jesus and loving everyone around them. When people saw how they lived, it made them want to follow Jesus too. Now that we know what the early church was really all about, what are some ways that we can live like that today? I would encourage you to pause the video right here and take some time to talk about that. Then, once you're done talking, unpause the video and continue. Our friend Amy is going to be talking to us a little bit more about our story right now, so let's take a look. The early church was quite a bit different than what most people might think of today when they think of church. Jesus had just gone back up to heaven and this new thing called the church was just starting. But this new church wasn't a building, it was a group of people. The Bible tells us in Acts 2.42 that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. This verse tells us four very important things that this new family of believers were devoted to. These are four things that we should still do today. So let's talk about them. Number one, they were devoted to learning about God from their teachers. Do you know what is so cool? You are doing right now exactly what was important to the followers of Jesus we read about in the Bible. They knew that it was important to listen to the teachers God had put in their lives, and so do you. They were committed to constantly listen to the instructions of their teachers and learn about how they could become more and more like Jesus. We see in God's Word that it is so important that we commit to go to where we can hear teachings about God so that we can grow in spiritual strength. Number two. They spent time with other followers of Jesus. Of course, we want to show God's love to everyone around us, but the Bible teaches us how important it is to have friends who are also followers of Jesus. These are the kind of friends that encourage us to live for Jesus. We want to seek out friends that help point us to Jesus throughout the day and also help us turn away from things that we know are sin. And we should do the same for them. So who do you spend your time with every day? 
Do you have friends who follow Jesus with their whole heart and help you do the same? We see in the Bible that spending time with others who follow Jesus helps us live strong for Him. Number three, they shared meals and basically everything else. The followers of Jesus were committed to not only sharing meals together, but also sharing everything with each other. They did not consider anything they had to be only their own. Instead, they considered whatever they owned to belong to the whole group. There was no, hey, this is mine, get your own. Quite the opposite. They lived so unselfishly. In fact, if they saw a need of someone around them and they didn't have what that person needed, they would sell something they owned so they could share the money that they made with those in need. Wow, I can tell you that is not the way just anyone in our world acts. It's really more natural for people to hold tightly onto their possessions and their money. It's not always natural to say, God, I know all of this belongs to you anyway, so I want to share whatever I have with those around me. This is only by the power of the Holy Spirit that the early church did these things. So how about you? Are you able to share generously with those around you? Do you look for ways to bless others instead of constantly focusing on what's yours and all the things you want? We can learn from these followers of Jesus and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, we can open our hands and say, God, all that I have is a gift from you and I'm willing to be joyfully generous with everything you've given me. Number four, they were devoted to prayer. The Bible shows us that our prayers are powerful. Followers of Jesus were committed to lives full of prayer because they knew what a difference it makes. They prayed for those who were sick or who were in need. They prayed all the time. Sometimes it's easy to get distracted by our activities or school or our, our games and hobbies, but there is nothing more important than going to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Prayer is something we can do all throughout the day. We can pray in the morning, at school, in the afternoon, in the evening. We can pray at home or church or even in the car. It is always a good time to talk to God and your prayers make a difference. We can pray prayers of praise, of thanksgiving, and also talk to God about our needs or the needs of those around us. God loves to hear you pray to Him. And every time we do, it opens the door to His presence in our lives and even in the lives of those around us. The family of believers in the Bible were committed to a life full of prayer, and we want to be devoted to prayer too. So wrapping up, we see that the church gathered together a lot. They shared all that they had with each other by the power of the Holy Spirit. They cared about how much Jesus sacrificed for them, so they wanted to honor Him by being willing to give to each other. They prayed for each other and always glorified God in all that they did. I want to be like this in my life and I'm sure you do too. Let's look for ways this week that we can be devoted to honoring Jesus through our choices, just like we see in the Bible. Our verse today shows us how the early church was devoted to learning about God, praying, spending time together, and sharing everything that they had. They set a pretty good example of how we as the church are supposed to live. How about you? Are you able to share generously with those around you? Do you look for ways to bless others instead of continually focusing on what you have and all the things that you want? I would encourage you to talk with your parents or small group leader about that right now. Remember, every day we make choices that honor Jesus. That's it for this week. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.